Okay guys, we're back for number 26 on Keystone Practice Test Module 2. This is another open-ended problem, so let's go ahead and read it. It says, Jackie is planning to hold a party in her backyard. She is renting a tent that will cost $25 for the day. That looks like a flat fee to me. Just to get that tent for the day, it's going to cost her $25 right out of pocket. Now, she goes on to estimate that the cost of food will be $7 per person. $7 per person. That per, the word P-E-R, per, that makes me think this is a rate, it's a slope. The table shows the relationship between the number of people invited to the party and then the total cost of the party. Okay, so we've got a nice table here. Now, let's go to letter A. Letter A says, write a linear equation in slope intercept form that shows the relationship between the number of people x and the total cost of the party y. Okay, again, we have done this so many times on these videos. I'm just going to take two ordered pairs off of my table and write my equation. And if you've watched these videos, you know I always take the first two because it's simple. So I'm going to take 560 and 1095 from the table. I am going to analyze my slope through those two points by taking my second y, which is 95, minus my first y, which is 60, and dividing that by my second x, which is 10, minus my first x, which is 5. And that gives me 35 divided by 5, which divides out to 7. And just as I suspected, my slope or my rate of change is $7. And that equates with this $7 per person. The food will cost $7 for every person that comes to the party. Now, to get my B in Y equals MX plus B, I'm going to substitute 7 for M. And I'm going to choose this first order pair for my x and my y. So for y, I'm going to substitute 60. 7 for slope. 5 for x. And plus b. Now solving for b, I have 60 equals 35 plus b. And to solve for B, I'll subtract 35 from both sides, which is going to cancel these out. 60 minus 35 is 25, so B is equal to 25. So it's just as I suspected. And a math-savvy person could have avoided all of this work by recognizing this. And I'll put it up here. The cost of this party, it's $25.00 flat, flat to rent the tent, plus an additional seven bucks per person. If you can get that from the reading, you can save yourself a whole lot of work. But this is the work. And again, I got to tell you guys, if it was my keystone, I'd probably show this work because I would want them to know that I understood where all these uh, numbers came from. Okay. Letter B. Use your equation to determine how much it would cost 23 people to attend this party. Well, first off, I'm going to decide what's a reasonable answer. 23 people attending the party. Let's go up to our table. 20 people, it's going to cost $165. 25 people, $200. So this answer right here better land between $165 and $200 because 23 lies between 20 and 25 people. But all I'm going to do is substitute 23 into x because x represents people in my equation. So this is going to look like this. Cost of the party equals $7 per person for food times those 23 people who are eating the food plus the $25 tent rental. I'm going to throw that into my TI-84, and I end up getting that the party will cost me $186.
Is that reasonable? Absolutely. 186 lies between 165 and 200. Okay, letter C. Letter C says, on the graph below, plot the points that represent the values in the table and draw the line through the points. Okay, so we've got our cost and we got our people. What's interesting is they put the people in. We have 0, 5, 10, 15 just modeling our table up top, but they don't give me any Y values, so I'm going to have to put some Y values on there. Uh, I don't have a lot of space, that's for sure, and I've got to get up to about $200 at 25 people, so I think I'm going to go, hmm, honestly, I think, I think I'm just going to go by 25s. So I think I'll go 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, let me extend this, sometimes I do that, 175, and 200. Okay. Now I'm going to plot these points the best I can without having actual graph paper here. So obviously, if I don't invite anybody to the party, uh, I'm still going to have to pay $25 for the tent. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point at 0 0.25. Now, if five people come to the party, if I'm reading my table up top, it's going to cost me $60. So I'm going to estimate 5, 60, maybe right there. And then 10 goes with 95, so I'm going to put that a little underneath 100. And 15 goes with 130, just a little bit above 125 there. And 20 goes with 165, about right there. And 25 goes with 200. So you can see that lines up pretty nicely. Not the easiest graph to make just because on a graph paper. But you can see the linear nature of it. Okay, and last but not least, if the cost to rent the tent is reduced by $5, okay, let's just look at that. The cost to rent the tent is reduced by $5. Well, it used to cost $25, so the old cost of the tent was $25, so the new cost of the tent would be 5 less than 25, which is 20. Okay, so that's my new cost to get the tent. And the food cost is reduced by $1 per person. Okay, so the old food, you know what I mean, Old food was $7 per person. So the new food will be $6 per person. Squeeze that on there. You can see that. So now they want me to write a new equation for the total cost of the party. Well, that's pretty simple. Modeling my equation above, I'm just going to take the new numbers and fill them in. So instead of it being y equals $7 a person plus 25 to rent the tent, I'm going to plug in my new numbers. Now it's y equals $6 per person plus $20 to rent the tent. Final answer. And that finishes number 26. Come on back for our last video, which will be open-ended number 27.